I'm Matt Noyce. Every Monday, Danielle and I love to give you that pattern predictions, right? The lookout over the next two weeks at how things are shaping up. I won't say that there's nothing stunning about the pattern because it's been a bit of a stunning pattern with the strength of jet stream disturbances coming down from the north. But having said that, there's no stunning change to the pattern coming up over the next two weeks. So take a look at the jet stream. You can see a well-defined trough that's in place now, right? If we play out through the course of this week, I'll take you out through midweek and you can see still big troughing, in fact, more energy. And we talk talked about this in the insights video that digs in across the northeast up in the middle and upper levels of the atmosphere drives more in the way of some scattered showers and thunder through midweek and then you get drier more comfortable air that comes in at the end of the week into the weekend notice the jet stream relaxes over us that's good that gives us a break in the weather it turns pretty nice at the end of this week into the upcoming weekend but notice also you don't entirely break what we call the troughing the dip in the jet stream remember what I always tell you in these pattern prediction videos the jet stream is the river of air high in the sky that steers storm along so to have it relax is good it's steering fewer disturbances but it also separates cool air to the north from warm to the south. So as it starts to ride northward next week on top of us, that opens the door to warmer air. That's why in our app, if you look at the 14-day forecast for your location anywhere in New England, you'll actually see mostly warmer temperatures next week than you have this week because the jet stream rides north a little bit and relaxes a little bit. But what's interesting is by the end of the 14-day forecast, look at this, you're getting right back into it. That's why I say it's not that it's not stunning. I mean, you keep getting these shots of northern energy that dig in and every time they come in it raises the risk of downpours and thunderstorms to be scattered around but it also delivers another shot of relatively cool relatively dry air behind those as they drop in you can see that on the surface map as well so i've colored in some of the uh, high temperatures for you obviously the oranges the browns that's where you get the warmer air that's where our temperatures are well into the 80s or even some 90s right we're not there over the course of the beginning, middle, or end of this week. But if we go out, let's say, to the weekend, you start to make the transition. We talked about the jet stream relaxing. Notice what it does. It opens the door to some milder air as we get into the middle of next week. And then just as that troughing, as that next disturbance kind of comes in and carves out the jet stream, there's a big wealth of cool air that gets ready to move at us again at the end of the 14-day period. So... In terms of how things are going to break down for you on temperature, you can see the dip that we take actually with the northerly wind and a lot of clouds around as we get into the next couple of days. And then we bring on the warmth again. We get back to the 80s. We go warmer than normal as we head into a lot of next week. Even though the jet stream is close by, it relaxes enough to allow that kind of a change in the pattern for us. The dew point temperature, the measure of the amount of moisture in the air gets more comfortable later this week into the weekend. But as the temperatures rise back to the 80s next week, the dew point rises with it. And in terms of the chance of showers, basically it peaks over the next few days with the fact that we've got the jet stream disturbance, the upper level low that's right over us. It comes down with the abundance of dry air heading into this upcoming weekend. And then it starts to go up again as the humidity rises, as you expect it might as we get up to the middle toward end of next week. Quick touch on the tropics, right? Because, of course, we're talking about Ernesto going by Newfoundland. What's next? Nothing for now. Actually, when you look at the uh, predicted Saharan dust, dust blowing off the Sahara Desert oftentimes, of course, is associated with dry air. Dry air is not real favorable for storms to develop out in the tropics. So notice there's not a ton, to be honest with you, of Saharan dust, but there is actually some wind shear that's out there, wind going in different directions. And that's not necessarily favorable for tropical systems to develop. So this week, probably not much. Next week, signals that things may become more favorable. Actually, here's the favorability plot. The red is favorable. Notice the big areas of unfavorable uh, for tropical uh, development here. A lot of that driven by that wind shear I was telling you about. But as we get toward next weekend, you start to see more favorability filling in. And this is why I wouldn't be surprised if we have waves that can develop and maybe a couple waves that can develop as we get into next week. All right. If you want to get the 14 day anytime and watch as it changes, at least now you know it's driving it and why the numbers and data look the way they do as they update in that 14 day forecast. You can do it by downloading our app. Noise is one degree outside weather app off of both the uh, Apple App Store and Google Play. All right. Hope you enjoyed the deeper dive into what's going on with the pattern. In the meantime, we'll look forward to seeing you again with another update at one degree outside.com.